Minister, good to see you. Thanks for your time and uh, and thanks for your patience Later. there sticking around. Um, business groups... Oh, you can going... have my boss on for as long as you want. <laughs> I won't complain when that's happening. Business groups going to war with you over IR. Did you rush it? Oh, there's been, there's been, there has been plenty of consultation and even at the moment, some of the conversations that are happening behind the scenes are pretty constructive. I flagged in the speech yesterday uh, that there are a couple of areas of about five different areas where we're having constructive conversations that will probably result in government amendments to the bill uh, and that's because of those conversations that are happening. They'll address some of the concerns, not all of the concerns, and, you know, obviously we are determined to get wages moving. We are yeah. determined that there's more job security and we want to close the gender pay gap. No, Innes Willocks, he was on the program earlier this hour. He, he, he says he's, he's more than happy to work with you on, on, a, on a few of those items, but there is a couple of sticking points. One of them is strikes. Will this lead to more and frequent strike action? Yeah, the, the area of the Act that they've been talking about saying, oh, no, this will be new industrial action, is the single interest uh, area. And industrial action's been available there since the Act was introduced in 2009. The main change we're making to industrial action is, first of all, before it happens, there has to be compulsory conciliation. So before industrial action happens, we try to bring the parties together and see if a compromise can be brokered and see if the industrial action can be avoided. That'll be compulsory. The other thing that happens is arbitration. Now, we often talk about the industrial umpire. Most people don't know that for fair work, the industrial umpire is like they're on the field, but they're only allowed to make rulings if both sides come to them and say, could you please make a ruling? Right. What we're I wanting to do is give the umpire a whistle. So when you have these long, protracted strikes that, you know, where people, you know, if you're not getting an agreement, your people aren't getting their pay rise, the business isn't getting a productivity outcome, and for the rest of us, it can be, you know, people get pretty annoyed at the inconvenience. Finally, the Commission will have the power to arbitrate and bring those disputes to a close. Uh, OK, I, I get that, but doesn't this give unions the power to pursue an unreasonable bargain claim, knowing that it will just go to the Fair Work Commission on any matter that's not accepted? I'll tell you, there's there's plenty of um, there's plenty of, of unions that there there are some that want arbitration. There are some that would prefer continued industrial action. It's not unanimous across the board. Effectively, we're making a very deliberate decision with all of this to make sure we get wages moving in those sorts of industries which you, know, you might say traditionally have been less militant. You can use whatever term you want, but basically they they tend to be lower paid. They tend to be feminised uh, and they're, you know, areas like aged care, like childcare, uh, industries where bargaining simply hasn't been able to work for them and multi-employer bargaining gives them the chance of being able to organise. But, you know, these are not the sorts of areas that are known for, for big industrial OK. Uh, th there has been concerns too, uh, particularly from the Chamber of Commerce and, and Angus Taylor too, about this leading to a wage price spiral. An example is that your new subsidies at, say, childcare centres will just get swallowed up by higher wages and then in turn make bills become bigger for consumers. Is there a point to that? Yeah, I, I think uh, they've, they've misunderstood how the Act works and I appreciate, uh, well, the business groups saw it last week, uh, but Angus Taylor would have only seen it yesterday, so there'll be errors that he's, that he's making there. One of the things that happens, particularly in the, the, the uh, supported stream, is the funder is brought to the table. So effectively, when these negotiations are happening, the government as funder can be brought to the table so that you, you in fact, are sorting out at the same time the wage negotiation with the funding issues that they can be brought together, which simply hasn't been possible until now. OK. Tony Burke, appreciate your time this morning. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you again soon.